It's a blast from my past. Here's a look at the Hasbro, the spectacular Spider-Man. This is the Electro Blast Attack, Spider-Man. Hey guys, welcome to the review spot. The bite of a genetically altered spider gave young Peter Parker unimaginable spider powers. Unfortunately, it took the tragic loss of his Uncle Ben for Peter to learn that with great power comes great responsibility. Now Peter must learn to juggle the daily challenges of growing up with his amazing adventures as the people's hero, the spectacular Spider-Man. Now, there's obviously a reason we're having a look at the spectacular Spider-Man, and that is because on March 30th, 2009, was actually my very first review, and it just so happens to be of the Electro Blast Attack Spider-Man. So I thought it was fitting, uh, even though technically I started my time here on YouTube in February was when I first started my channel. It wasn't actually until March, like I said, 30th, 2009 when we did the first review, my very first review on YouTube. Sentimental I am a little bit. Uh, nonetheless, though, the Spectacular Spider-Man stands at 5.8 inches. Pretty impressive, actually, for its time. I only wish toys nowadays could be as cool as these ones were back in the day, but I digress. Centimeters, answering off to the mob who is asking for centimeters, you're looking at a figure that stands 14.8 centimeters tall. Yes, yes, taking a trip down memory lane. Back in the day when I had done the review of Spectacular Spider-Man here, it was my very first review and we back then we had a 15 minute limit. So I believe even like the beginning of the review was mostly package, something I learned later on. People didn't want to spend a whole lot of time looking at packaging. And then I did a second part, a second 15 minute video or a little less than that, looking at the figure itself. Now with uh, as advancements have gone, we can kind of do this all in one review and maybe it might not actually even be less than 15 minutes. We'll see. I certainly want to take some trip down memory lane, maybe as we are looking at some of the component pieces here, one of which being this web shooting, more like water shooting cannon backpack that clips to the back torso of a Spider-Man. It's been cast primarily, as you can see here in gray plastic, there's a screw hole there as well. I guess this has saved some costs of them producing the mold with the clip. They just decided to make two molds, screw it together. Uh, it is pretty hollow on the one side, pretty finished on the other, done here in like a lighter blue, just a little accent areas. Then coming out from that is something that almost looks like you would be seeing it with your vacuum cleaner, this accordion sort of hosing that is done in a translucent color. Now, this would be an indicator normally that this would be filled with water. <laughs> and it would shoot water at the end. Not nearly the case here. While it is translucent, it looks like it could transport liquid. The only thing it's actually transporting is the backpack to the side arm cannon that's gonna attach to Spider-Man's arm. In attached to that is this. It's a, sort of a water effect. This is replacing the fact that you aren't using real water and squirting it out at the dog. Instead here, this is something that is friction pulled, but there's actually a spring rooted deep inside that cannon that allows this to fire off. 
I don't want to fire it too far because I don't want it to get very lost. I don't want it to spring across and then I wouldn't be able to find it later. The water effect is effective. It kind of actually looks even more like a water spider with multiple more than eight legs, of course, doing it all in a translucent blue plastic. It sits well enough in there, but also you can't help but feel like the pressure of it pushing back just really sends it out on its own without really involving you to pull it back and fire it off. All right, we'll fire it off a little bit. There we go. I'm never going to be able to reach it for the rest of this review. You can, however, take this clips right onto the back of Spider-Man, just like so. It just fits the back of Spider-Man. And then from there, it just fits getting around his arm. I feel like it really does pull against this tubing. You can even see where the stress marks have started to develop just from where that connects. It's sort of an awkward tube. It doesn't really know what it wants to be. And it's just really tight fitting it on his arm. It's not so much the arm that's, again, the biggest problem. As you can see, the little stress marks, it's starting to rip and tear as literally we are speaking of it. So I probably will not leave it on him for very long. I don't even remember what I did with the last Spider-Man figure that I had. Obviously, this one is a brand new one. I had to source this one out on eBay uh, because I simply just couldn't find... I couldn't find the one that I had. I'm certain I sold it. I probably sold a whole bunch of these Spider-Man figures thinking that I just didn't want it. Didn't think I... I thought I had moved on from that spectrum of collecting spectacular Spider-Man figures. Just goes to show. We go back and we pick these things up later. For it's certainly a nostalgic value alone. I probably should have just kept the figure because, again, this was my very first review here on YouTube. Now, if you'll do excuse me, I'm going to go ahead and retrieve that water effect there. Now that that's out of the way, let's have a look at the spectacular Spider-Man. A little, couple of little questions that I've gotten over the course of the years of doing YouTube. Now, 10 years later, can you believe that? 10 years later, questions I've gotten such as, why did you come up with the name Review Spots? Well, we can certainly talk about that as we're looking at these figures. I want to really kind of touch on some questions that I get regularly from you guys. Essentially, as we're kind of looking at the first figure that started it all. Uh, review Spot really was the reason why I picked that name and that name alone was because I wanted to call the reviews something other than reviews. I brainstormed for an afternoon, possibly even two, trying to come up with something else I could call it besides review. Because everybody else, back in 2009, everybody else was probably only about five people, but everybody else was using the term reviews. I wanted to come up with something different. So I thought instead of calling it reviews, what if I called them spots, like video spots, vignette spots. So that's really where the name came from. And it sort of just unraveled from there. Uh, I still sort of to this day use the term spot. It's not so much using it for my my own name as something again I've kind of changed over the t over the years. At one point I was sort of using spot as a reference to myself, but again as times change I just decided to kind of move on from that mature if you will. Other questions I've gotten such as how many how, uh, how many cameras have you gone through since you've started reviewing? And here's the honest truth is I'm only on my second camera. The first camera I had for several years shooting the footage that you've seen on this channel, even like the stuff I'm shooting nowadays, is actually only using the second camera that I've been using since I started on YouTube. Things have certainly changed, such as backdrops, lighting, things also such as logos. I've changed that repeatedly over the years, simply just because I grew so tired of one thing and of course I just kept changing my mind. One of the reasons why getting a tattoo would probably be such a bad idea. As we look at this figure, and we'll kind of look more at kind of lo looking back on this channel, I really do quite like this figure. There's something charming about Spectacular Spider-Man that still holds true to me nowadays. It's still one of the best Spider-Man cartoons to this day. It's not, I guess, counting the 90s uh, Spider-Man cartoon, but it's still one of my personal favorites. I always really like the design of Spider-Man here from the series. His head was kind of best described as sort of a five-sided head. Kind of almost really, really reminded me of like a baseball diamond. Uh, with that came it with the really unique looking perspective. A lot of the characters in the cartoon were very much stylized. And like these figures are really certainly reflections of that. 
the coloring on this guy is pretty much primarily blue. Of course, you get a little bit of the reds. Reds don't quite match. Things like the red in the sides of his sleeve don't quite jive to the coloring of the red in the middle. Same with the head, sort of the same color as the red here. Sort of is not quite the same red that's present on the front. Paint is generally pretty clean for what little of the paint has been added. The meshing, for example, of the spider webbing is done all in panel lined black. Uh, I don't know really what's happened up here. It sort of lists this texturing to the plastic, likely the way it came out of its mold. One thing to its credit, certainly, is the fact that it does look like it does from the cartoon. Now, there was, of course, several different Spider-Mans prior to this that didn't quite look like the cartoon and likely just chalked up to the fact that the company probably got the original concept artwork, based the figures on that. Even if you look at the back of the packaging for a lot of the spectacular Spider-Man figures, uh, the the Doc Ock, for example, even like the Venom, don't look anything like they would do in the cartoon. And eventually we would get like redos, if you will, of some of those figures. They were like Doc Ock, for example, came out with a second release. Uh, Venom was still initially the same release as we'd gotten before, but his paint scheme had changed a slight bit. Spider-Man probably saw the biggest changes from what we initially got in those initial first wave lineup of figures to what we eventually get would, would get here. I think I just ultimately chose to go with a Spider-Man figure because I really thought like a lot of people liking superheroes would be more inclined to jump on board watching a, a guy, this humbled guy first way into getting into reviewing probably would be more interested in this guy reviewing a Spider-Man figure than perhaps, say, a horror figure. I thought I would be probably alienating some people out of the gate, thinking that this guy was only going to review horror figures, and ultimately, you know, again, I just reviewed a whole bunch of horror figures. I reviewed basically everything I collected. I didn't buy necessarily back, back in the day things for specifically reviewing. I just merely bought a whole lot of stuff from my collection. I was interested in Spider-Man. I was interested in horror figures. I was interested in Batman figures, Transformers, G.I. Joe, anything you could really think of. I was really interested in picking up at the time, but I really didn't have a, an outlet for that. As you probably saw my collection in my closet, a lot of that stuff stayed sealed because, again, I just I had a bigger plan that when I would eventually move out to a larger house, all that stuff would be on the walls. And that never really just came to be. So I got into the realm of reviewing on YouTube. And again, this guy was the first time that the first thing that I looked at on this channel. Uh, other questions I certainly have gotten over the years, like, for example, uh, what is your favorite superhero? Well, actually, my favorite superhero is not Spider-Man. My favorite superhero is either Batman or Superman. Spider-Man would come a close third. Uh, I was a big fan back in the day of Wolverine and both Deadpool, but as those those characters became more mainstream, I sort of lost interest in them. Like even Venom, I don't have as much interest in Venom as I did back in the day because Venom back in the day was a little bit more less mainstream. Less people were kind of into him and maybe that was where my appeal came from, my interest in them. Having a look at this guy's articulation, his head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down. Uh, you can hinge the arms outward and you can rotate them all the way around. Uh, a bend in the elbow. Uh, there is a waist, a wrist swivel, I should say. This is good. He actually has an upper torso ball joint. He has a lower, t t a lower waist, lower torso swivel. A little loose, unfortunately, on this figure, despite for the fact that I just got this figure out of packaging. The legs swivel forward and back. Now, this is sort of one of those things where if you see it, there's the hinge right there. If you bring it forward, that will allow the leg to move forward. Uh, it will not allow you to move the leg outward unless the hinge is facing basically the direction that you want to move the leg. As a swivel on the top cut of the thigh, double hinge on the knee. This is stuff that we really don't get any more with these figures. No, no swivel on the boot, a hinge back and forth on the feet. Like I said, cartoons nowadays are producing toys that are really subpar to some of the stuff we were getting back in the day. Spectacular Spider-Man really was where it was at. I found all the characters, all the figures, for example, looked like their cartoon counterparts, Spider-Man being no exception. Uh, Spider-Man also came out in, like I said, a variation of this. Uh, there was also the dark costumed Spider-Man, which I actually picked up a couple of times as well. There was a couple of variations to that, all of which I sadly sold, only, only regretting it later. 
Yes, 10 years later, 10 years have passed since I first had a look at the spectacular Spider-Man, the Electro Blast Spider-Man, just to be exact. 10 years have passed, about 8,000 videos later. I kid you not, about 8,000 videos. And that's actually, those are just the videos I've posted. As I've changed backdrops, as I've changed lighting, and I've played around with lighting over the years, some to better success than others. Some, unfortunately, some casualties in videos have been deleted along the way just because I felt as I progressed and hopefully improved with the video content, I just simply couldn't, I couldn't feel myself wanting to put those older videos up. So I deleted them. So there's probably actually closer to about 9,000 videos when it was all said and done, but I think eventually what came to this channel was closer to about 8,000. I think we're about coming up to about 8,000 in the meantime. Several backdrops later, several different lighting options later, only two cameras, only two cameras have been producing content since I started on YouTube. In fact, I think this camera that I'm looking at or looking through right now at uh, was probably only about three years old. It's about three or four years old. So about halfway through the video content that you've probably been watching on this, on this YouTube channel for the last couple of years, thank you for doing that by the way, has been the newer camera. I haven't upgraded the camera, I've just been upgrading the lighting and hopefully to a better results. The backdrops have changed, the logos certainly have changed, and the intros have been changed at nausea. What can I say? I'm a guy that likes to change and keep upgrading himself. And uh, hopefully, hopefully the logo and everything else that we've got going on right now will stick for a bit. I am actually happy with the logo that I'm using right now. All the logos, another question somebody has asked as well, all the logos I designed myself. I've had some help with a couple of them, but for the most part, all the logos and everything you're kind of looking at right now has been the result of me, just me behind the scenes. Uh, a couple of people have also asked, uh, is there multiple people that work behind the scenes doing these videos? No, again, it's just, it's just me. Like I said, I've had help over the years. Uh, a lot of great individuals have helped with things like video intros, for example, and even like the logos themselves. I've had some help with the logos here and there, but for the most part, it's been a one-man show back then and even still to this day. Uh, hopefully, as somebody has also asked, will you continue to do reviewing on YouTube? I could see myself probably doing this for at least a couple more years. I do enjoy it. And I think that's really one of the keys to having a successful channel. Not to say that this channel is successful, but I think you have to continue to have passion what you're doing. The moment you stop having passion and the moment it becomes more a chore than anything else is really where the struggle starts to begin. If you feel like you have to do this, might be the time where you want to walk walk away. Take a break, if you will. I don't think I've really ever taken a break. It seems to continue to be a case where I just churn out videos. Hopefully not at nausea, but uh, I haven't really ever taken a break for the 10 years that I've been doing this. I suppose I along the ways, I probably have wanted to take a vacation and just step away for a week or two, or maybe a month. But what can I say? I've got a passion for doing this, and hopefully you guys have been enjoying this as much as I have for the whole duration that I've been producing content here on YouTube. Uh, I hope, I can only hope, that I post this actually on March 30th, 2019. If I don't, I will be disappointed. I don't even know what day March 30th is on the calendar. I can only hope it's during the week where I'll remember to actually post this on the anniversary 10 years ago, not when I started the channel, but when I first started producing video content. To everybody that has continued to support this channel, watch it throughout the years, even if you've dropped off. If you've started watching, say, when you were seven and maybe as you got into your teens, you sort of drifted away from this channel and you've come back, Thank you. Thank you for coming back and continuing to watch the videos that I put out for you guys. Uh, more videos certainly will be coming your way. I can't imagine we'll begin, be doing another 8,000 videos, but I mean, it's easy to say that. You never know with the amount of videos. Maybe there's, I do at least at times, sometimes two to three videos a day. That adds up real quick. You never know. We might actually be hitting that 16,000 video mark. By that point, I don't know, maybe I'll have Maybe I'll be in a walker. I don't know. I'll be really a really old guy by then. So once again, long-winded final looks. Thank you very much for everybody that has continued to stick it out with this channel. And rest assured, guys, that I continue to do this for you. And for the fact that I got to meet some incredible people over the years, all of which are people that shared similar interests. And one of the reasons why I started this channel off in the first place. So again, from me... 
this guy behind the camera to you, the viewers. Thank you very much. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button. Even if you're new to this channel, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. More videos will come in your way. And I may even go back and have a look at some of the earlier figures that I started this channel with. So just kind of FYI, just keep, I may not do it to the day that they came out, but I'll do my best. That's all I can really guarantee you. That's all I can really say to you. It's not, it's not a guarantee though. Thanks for watching guys. It's long winded as it should probably be. I'll see you guys next time. Thousand videos, now that's dedication It's more than a video, that's a creation That he is making from experience Here he is, you're curious of what his appearance is Serious, yet he makes it fun to watch A lot of reviewers are delirious While some get props When did a man is hot, the spot's not a man to flop Respects the fans who watch, couldn't guess the next random spot The spot army is now taking over This is our spot Sitting on top, the spot army is now taking over. I bet you're confused. Check the reviews. The spot army is now taking over.